Welcome to Whiteboard Programming, where we simplify programming with easy to understand whiteboard videos. And today we'll discuss about what is serverless architecture. Well, it is also known as serverless computing or function as a service. By definition, it is a way to build and run applications or services without having to manage infrastructure. This means your application still runs on servers, but all the server management is done by a third party service. And you no longer have to provision, scale or maintain servers to run your application, databases or storage systems. That brings us down to the question, why use serverless architectures? Simply as by using serverless architecture, your developers can focus on their core product instead of worrying about managing and operating servers. This technology works on the concept of virtualization, which means sharing a computer's resources among several other independent operating systems. This enables one to use system's full capacity by distributing its capabilities among many users or environments. Next, let's talk about pros and cons of serverless architecture. Pros include number one, reduced costs. By using serverless, you can cut down to almost 60% of your server management cost. Number two, less worry on technology management. Now time to say goodbye to applying latest updates because you'll be using servers that are being managed by a third party. So it's their job to keep up with the technology, updates and fix bugs. Number three, easy scalability. So give up the thought about provisioning the infrastructure as it automatically scales if traffic spikes. Number four, promotes product focus. As you say goodbye to all your worries, now you can spend more time and effort to improve your customer experience. On the other hand, cons include number one, vendor lock-in. So you're trusting your technology provider and they will run the show for you. Further, you lose control over runtimes, hardware and updates, which might cause an issue depending on your business use case. Number two, unsuitable for long-term tasks. Serverless is great for short-term and real-term processes like sending out emails. However, for long-duration tasks where functions are running constantly, you'll find yourself paying more for compute time than when paying for a reserved case. For example, a task like uploading large files would need extra functions to be called on. Number three, implementation drawbacks. As integration testing on a serverless application is a tough task and you cannot always rely on unit testing, it has a major drawback if you want to update your features. Number four, architectural complexity. Because you lose the power to make decisions like how small the function should be, how much time should it take to assess, implement and test. Also, there should be a balance between number of functions and it should make an application call, otherwise it might run in a runtime error. With that, I hope this video was helpful to you and delivered value. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future updates.